Okay, so the dust has settled. It has been uh, almost a week since the Super Bowl where the Buccaneers shockingly beat the Chiefs. They didn't even beat them. They beat the fucking brakes off of them. 31-9. to nine. Um, Never, ever would have expected that shit to happen, but it did. So shout out to the Bucks. I mean, six seed that at one point in the season looked, I knew they were gonna make the playoffs, but they just did not look good. Um, and they were losing in the playoffs to the Saints by 10 points, had a huge strip on Jared Cook, and that literally changed their whole season. Because from that moment on, they went on like, I think a 20 to zero run, won that game by 10 points. They went into Lambeau, they weren't stopped one and then they just man they kicked ass and they took the hell out of the fucking chief's name for sure they took everybody on that damn team's name um shout out patrick mahomes though he's a great quarterback i don't care what anybody says um i i don't i don't really um deduct points from his legacy uh, i don't think anybody that does is an idiot because the motherfucker still made it to the super bowl back-to-back -back years anyway uh bills 2020 what a fucking season um you know dust has settled it's been three weeks since they unfortunately were eliminated by the chiefs as i expected in the afc championship but beginning of the season if you would have told me the bills lose in kansas city to the chiefs in the afc championship i would have said that is the most realistic yet best case scenario possible and if you were to tell me you know if you told me that i'd be like okay i need to know what was josh allen's stat line you know based on the fact that they made it to the afc championship i would think he probably threw for maybe upper 20s and touchdowns maybe close to four thousand yards maybe accounted for 35 total touchdowns we'll say uh you know maybe 10 15 turnovers but no <laughs> Never. And, and also, I would have assumed the defense would probably, you know, be top five as, as it has been a previous couple of years. No, not at all. Not at all. All right. The Bills pretty much, at least under Sean McDermott, have pretty much been a below average offense with a, an amazing defense. And this year, honestly, they were an amazing offense with... I don't want to say below average defense, but maybe a slightly above average defense, all things considered, if you look at the totality of their their work. Because they had some good games, but they also had some bad games. Um, personally, though, I, th I think the defense wasn't that bad. I, I would say they had a good defense. But, I mean, if you have a great offense and a good defense, I mean, that's a recipe for success. And, I mean, this Bills team won 15 games, all things considered. They went 13-3 and in the fucking regular season, and they won two playoff games. And... If you would have told me that, like I said, you know, the beginning of September before the season kicked off, I would have been like, holy shit, this is amazing. I mean, and Stefan Diggs, all pro, uh, 1,500 yards and some change, uh, 130 catches, I think almost, and uh, I think like eight or nine touchdowns. I mean, like, how could you possibly have expected a better uh, production from Stefan Diggs and Josh Allen? And, like, even guys like Cole Beasley. Like, those three had pretty much the best seasons you could have ever asked for, you could have ever hoped for, uh, realistically. You know, because Josh Allen last year, you know, he literally, in a three-year progression, it, it's like the, uh, once again, it's like the best realistic case scenario. It's amazing. Like, he went from being bad to average, if uh, average, yeah. And then amazing. Like it was three out of 10, six out of 10. I don't want to say 10 out of 10, but like nine out of 10. Like it, it was amazing. His production was uh, amazing. It was, it's unheard of borderline. Um, and so he was fantastic. I think he had 37 passing touchdowns. I think uh, if you include the playoffs, he had 50 total touchdowns, I believe. Um, I think like 40, I want to say he threw five touchdowns in his three playoff games. Uh, he had like 50 total touchdowns in the 18 games. I mean, un unbelievable. Uh, you know, I think, or 19 games. 
what they go, 15 and four? Yeah. Um, he was amazing, you know? And I mean, you kind of like, do you want to, you know, just only talk about Josh Allen? But I mean, he is everything to talk about because he and Stefan Diggs were, I don't want to say they were both unknowns, but nobody, I don't think, expected them to be this good, you know? And they made such a big jump because, you know, Stefan Diggs coming into Buffalo, I think people realized that he was going to be the number one receiver. They realized that, yeah, there's a good chance he might get one, two, you know, he might get 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 yards, maybe 10 touchdowns. But first in the league in receptions and yards? Nobody saw that coming. Josh Allen threw for like 3,100 yards last year in 15 games or 16 games, 15 games. And then this year he throws for almost 4,600 in 15 and a half games. Like, bruh, what the fuck? Like, dude, <sighs> he was amazing. He was amazing. He was everything you thought that he could be when he got drafted in his best case scenario because he's got an insane arm, can make some insane throws, and he did that throughout this year like crazy. I mean, I, he made some really, really great plays. Uh, you know, the one that, in my opinion, I think his best play of the year was probably an eight-yard touchdown. Mm, it, probably the eight-yard touchdown pass to Stephon Diggs against the Patriots. That was uh, about 30 yards to the air um, where he rolls out to his right, circles back to his left, and throws a fucking bullet to Stefan Diggs. I think that was probably his best and most impressive play. But, I mean, there were so many. I mean, he, he was making highlight plays and just great throws all season long, you know. Uh, a big moment for me was, you know, that what should have been a game-winning touchdown and, you know, 90% of the time that's your game-winning touchdown against the Cardinals. Clutch pass to Stefan Diggs. Loved it. That was amazing. Um, you know, that pass against the 49ers that went right over uh, Fred Warner. I mean, he, like, bit that through a fucking, oh, my God. That placement was insane. Um, and, I mean, just in general, you know, I could, I could talk forever about how great Josh Allen was, you know, because he was just, I mean, he was 30. I think he had 45 total touchdowns. No, no, no. I think he had a receiving touchdown, eight rushing touchdowns, and 37 passing touchdowns. And I believe he had 10 interceptions. I think he had 15 total turn. I don't want to say he fumbled it five or six times, um, which, I mean, you know, 16 turnovers from your quarterback. I'm not mad at that. I mean, it sounds like a lot, but, you know, fumbles, unless you're Daniel Jones, I don't really, I don't really burden quarterbacks too hard with that, you know. Um, but, yeah, Josh Allen was fantastic. Stephon Diggs was fantastic. They exceeded everybody's expectations. And going forward, I think, I don't know how you can't expect them to continue to play. Maybe not at that level, you know, because people were like, you know, when Patrick Mahomes had his first year when he bust out with 50 touchdowns and 5,000 yards, people were saying, oh, he's only going to get better. And I'm of the belief that, you know, Patrick Mahomes probably will not throw more than 50 touchdowns again in his career. He might, you know, hover around the mid-40s, you know, a couple more times. But, you know, fun fact, Tom Brady threw 50 touchdowns in 2007, and he only threw 40 touchdowns or more in one other season, and it was this year in 2020. So shout-out Tom Brady, by the way. He's a f – man, what a f – how about Tom Brady? Let me just say this. How about Tom Brady? This motherfucker really just kind of, you can say what you want. And, and, you know, the Bucks are, they have some weapons. And, I mean, they are about as loaded of an offense as it gets. Um, but, I mean, really, he he pretty much picked the worst, most dysfunctional one of uh, franchises in the NFC for sure. Um, and just was like, hey, y'all ain't been to the playoffs in 13 years, I think, like 2008. Uh, I'm just, not only am I going to take you to the playoffs, but, you know, the Packers, Saints, these, you know, Titans of the NFC who have been, you know, Super Bowl contenders for pretty much the entire decade of the past and have only been to one Super Bowl combined. I think the Packers went in, like, 2010. No, 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 no. Fuck that, all right? 
we're like dead last in win percentage in the NFC, but we still have a Super Bowl. So Packers, Saints, suck it. That made me laugh. Like really, like the Bucks just came out of nowhere. Three years ago, if you would have told me the Bucks would have been Super Bowl champions before the Saints were, like let's say going into the, like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Shout out Tom Brady. I, I like Tom Brady. I hated him in Buffalo because, you know, he beat the shit out of us every chance he got. But, you know, now that he's in Tampa and just how he's conducting himself, I mean, I always I always thought he was goaded for being on a family guy. And then just to see him have success in Tampa is is pretty cool. And I mean Tampa Bay. So that's it's got a nice ring to it. But um, you know, outside of Stefan Diggs and uh Josh Allen, those were definitely the two big bright spots. Um, you know, Cole Beasley was fantastic as well. Um, you know, like I said, I don't understand how you could possibly expect more from him. Uh, he was second team all pro, pretty much the best slot receiver in the league. Um, he killed it. I think he had almost a thousand yards and I believe he missed a game or two. Um, and I mean, he was just clutch. Uh, you know, I recall a catch he made against the Cardinals on third down with one hand. That was huge. It was the drive that ended up being would be go ahead touchdown to Stefan Diggs if it wasn't for the Hail Murray um I mean Cole Beasley is a fucking player he looks like prime Julian Edelman Wes Bulker to me I'm just I'm just being honest but um you know outside of Josh Allen and, and those two stud receivers you know you had Gabe Davis who um you know as a rookie being that he was pretty much the fourth option at receiver um for a decent amount of the year I thought he as a fourth round pick performed about as well as you could have expected. Uh, I believe he had about 500 yards. He had like eight touchdowns. Pretty nice there. Uh, John Brown uh, was very sporadically involved. Um, he, I want to say there was only a game or two where he really showed out. Uh, he definitely took the back seat a little bit to Stefan Diggs, but he was also hurt uh, a bit and which is really unfortunate because you know John Brown was a huge part of the Bills offense last year and I think he's a, a really good receiver I think you know all, all things considered I think the Bills have one of the better receiving cores in the league um you know when it comes to to wideouts because they are in my opinion uh four deep you know and not very many teams can say that um but you know outside of oof, outside of those guys you know your production from the tight ends were was kind of spotty unfortunately I mean I think this tight end collective caught like 15 touchdowns, which is kind of a lot. But I mean, you know, Tyler Croft was in and out of the lineup. I think he was injured, but also was a healthy scratch. Um, you know, he has some decent numbers. I mean, he caught a nice game winning touchdown against the Rams, but you know, he wasn't anything to write home about. Never really was a fan of him before they signed him. And then, you know, the two years after doesn't really, he's not left much of a taste in my mouth. Uh, Dawson Knox, he was streaky last year, but I mean, the way he was playing, you, you had a, you know, you had legitimate reason to think this kid could be, you know, a freak of a tight end because he's capable. I mean, he's just as athletic as a Kelsey or a Kittle, but, um, you know, he was, he was inconsistent, but in my opinion, I don't think he had as much splash plays as he had last year. Um, he had a lot of boneheaded drops. I mean, he did have a few touchdowns here and there, but the tight ends were definitely something that the Bills struggled with. Um, and then you had the running game, which was more or less the same. Uh, you know, Devin Singletary last year was a nice little running back. Kind of reminded me of like an Aaron Jones type, um, you know, uh, a guy that, you know, he didn't rush for 12, 1300 yards, whatever. But, you know, he had uh, really good yards per carry. He was reliable in the pass game. He could make you miss. I mean, he wasn't going to truck three or run by you. But, I mean, he was a st still a really nice, fun rookie that could do a, a lot of things, especially in open field. But this year, it was like he took two steps forward and like a step and a half back, you know. He didn't really... He, in my opinion, he was slightly less effective than he was last year. Uh, Zach Moss as well, the rookie, he had his moments, um, but he wasn't very great either. I mean, he was okay, you know. For as many nice plays as he had, he had a lot of, you know, we get 15 rushes for 30 yards, you know. I mean, I don't know if the Bills had a single 
100 yard run. Actually, I believe the I think Devin Singletary went over 100 against the Broncos when he had that 50 yard touchdown at the end of the game. Uh, but I don't. Other than that, though, I mean, I, I think there was the game against the Chargers. I know the Bills ran the ball a lot, and I believe against the Patriots. But I think outside of those two games, they really did not run the ball very much at all. Like, I don't think. I think in those two games, they had close to 200 yards rushing in each. But otherwise, I mean, they they could they had they had a, a lot of trouble running the ball, but they didn't really need to because they were so pass heavy. Um, you know, against who was it? The Colts, maybe in the wild card round. Uh, they didn't run the ball, but maybe once or twice, and one of them uh, in the first half, and one of them was a Josh Allen design run. Like crazy. Um, offensive line, you know it. This the Bills. Offense was very pass heavy, okay? And when I say that, you know, they were a really good pass blocking unit. Um, Daryl Williams in particular, I mean, the tackles were amazing. They were, um, you know, interior line, mm, it was, you know, they cut Quentin Spain and Feliciano was kind of in and out of the lineup. The guard play, the interior line play was eh, but the guard, the tackles were amazing. Uh, however, Similar to the running backs, their run blocking was not great. Um, and, you know, you can say what you want. Personally, I am of the belief that you should be able to run the ball if you need it. Um, and you had a lot of people with that opinion, but you also had people who I think that, you know, point had, holds some sort of validity of if you don't need to run the ball, you don't run the ball. If you can move the ball really well through the air, you can move the ball really well through the air. And I mean, the Bills absolutely did that. They moved the ball through the air as well as anybody last year. And I mean, you know, there are points when you need to, you know, eat up the clock in a game and, you know, running the ball is, is really effective in doing that. And I think when the Bills needed to do that, mainly against like, I remember specifically against the Steelers, I believe the Bills got the ball back with seven minutes left and they ran the game completely out. Like, it was amazing. Like, that that was that was awesome. Um, but otherwise, I mean, there were stretches where the Bills were winning by pretty much double, I didn't want to say they won four or five games in a row by double digits. So, I mean, they didn't even really need to worry about that. Um, I mean, it was, this, this team offensively was just, oh, it was amazing. I mean, yeah, running the ball was not great, but they were aware of that, and they made up for it with just an exceptional passing attack. Uh, spent 18 minutes talking about, <laughs> pretty much for the most of 18 minutes, talking about the Bills' offense. Um, and, I mean, it deserves it for the way it performed. Defensively, you know, as I said, you know, for McDermott's whole tenure, and he is a defensive-minded uh, head coach. He's had Leslie Frazier as his coordinator the whole time. I mean, the... Um, continuity of the Bills coaching staff has pretty much been constant ever since Josh Allen has got here. I know they had Rick Dennison in 17, but I think David was hired in 2018. And I know Frazier's been here since 17. So um, the defense definitely took a step back. Shout out to Ski Mask, Rip Jose. Um, but, you know, it was, I don't know how to feel about it, you know, because your back end was consistent. I mean, Poyer and Hyde, I've never had anything bad to say about them since they've got here. They both came here in the same season, and ever since they've been here, they've either been really good. They they've been good safeties year in and year out. I mean, yeah, some years better than others, like 2017. I mean, both of them were amazing. They both should have been Pro Bowlers, borderline All Pro. And you know, maybe 2018 or maybe 2019, they kind of took a step back, but they were always really good. And they've always been good, and they were good this year. You know, uh, I thought Poyer had a hell of a season. Hyde is a great player, uh, but personally, I think Hoyer, or Hoyer, <laughs> I literally combined their names there. Uh, I thought Poyer should have been a pro bowler for sure, especially since the fact that the Bills were so successful. Um, he had a hell of a season, but once again, an unbelievable pro bowl. So I'm kidding. If you would have told me that he would put out the body of work he has in the four seasons at Buffalo and that he would not have made the pro bowl a singular time, I'd be like, oh, that's one in a million. Like that, that just never happens, but alas, it is what it is. Um, cornerbacks, uh, Tredavious White, mm, he had an amazing rookie year, a so like a decent sophomore year, an amazing third year, and then this year, um, I, I want to say he was definitely good. I don't think he was quite as good as his. I think he was better than his sophomore season, 
not quite as good as his third season, not quite as good as his rookie year. Uh, but he played well. This cornerback number two, that was what was sometimes problematic. Um, you know, because they had Levi Wallace, who was awesome as a rookie, not great his second year, still young. And then this year he was uh, so-so. I mean, he had his moments, but his play is uh, indicative of the fact that, you know, Bill's Mafia and from what it looks like, people think they should try and find a second cornerback and or they should continue searching for one in the draft or free agency. And I can get that, you know. I'm a fan of Levi Wallace, always have been undrafted Alabama guy. He's cool, um, but he's not great. Uh, Josh Norman, he had his moments, you know. They He got beat like a drum at times, but, you know, he also made some really nice plays for us. Uh, specifically, remember the forced fumble against the Raiders. That was a huge play. Um, and, you know, he got stiff-armed pretty bad uh, against the Titans, but, you know, he was good, bad, and ugly. I mean, literally. Um, and, I mean, outside of him, Teron Johnson was fantastic in the slot. Huge, two huge pick sixes. I mean, who could forget? You know, if you thought that one against the Steelers was one of the best plays the Bills' defense has had in a long time, I mean, goddamn. I mean, did you see the one against the Ravens? That literally sealed the game. It was almost a 14-point swing. And ultimately, the Bills won by 14 points. So, goes to show you there. Um, and I mean, moving on, you know, to the front seven. This, I think, was probably... You can say the Bills' O-line when it comes to run blocking was pretty bad. But in my opinion, if you look at them as a whole, based on how well they pass blocked, I don't think they were as bad. Um, but the front seven of the Bills was... Oh, man, at times, the games that the Bills lost, with the exception of the Arizona game, the reason they lost is because, uh, unfortunately, their front four, front seven, whatever you want to call it, kind of got blown off the ball. Um, I don't want to say the Bills struggled to get a pass rush, but, you know, it was evident in the games they lost, they could not get any pressure with their four, with their front four. Um, you know, Jerry Hughes, I love him. You know, that touchdown he had against the fucking Broncos. I mean, amazing. Fun-ass play to watch. Love the guy. He's been in Buffalo. I think he's the only guy on the roster right now, if I'm correct, that's been here uh, through the Rex Ryan period without leaving. Because I think Lee Smith was on the team, but he went to Oakland. Um, so we love we love Jerry Hughes for that, the continuity. He's I've been watching him forever, you know, and I love Jerry. He's one of my favorite players to ever put on a Bills uniform. But, I mean, as good as I think his swim move is, and I do see him cause a lot of pressures, he's not the dominant edge rusher that we need and that you need in this league. Uh, you know, Mario Addison, not a big fan of him. Uh, Ed Oliver wasn't really hitting it this year, didn't have the, the sophomore leap we were expecting, uh, you know, and Harrison Phillips, uh, whatever. Uh, Trent Murphy, no show. AJ Epinesa didn't play very much. So, I mean, and you have Starr, who was uh, out due to COVID. Um, and, I mean, I, I actually kind of did like the play of Vernon Butler, to be honest. Uh, and then also uh, Quentin Jefferson from Seattle. Those guys actually, and I figured they were going to be rotational players, and they were. I thought those guys were some of the best players on the line, to be honest. I mean, I thought they contributed nicely based on the fact that you didn't really expect them to get much playing time. But, I mean, the front of the Bills was really not – it was pretty bad. Like, the front four was not was not great. Uh, and then the linebackers, I love them on paper. You know, I think Matt Milano is a great player. Tremaine Edmonds is a freak. But, mm, man, they – they were kind of wishy-washy. I thought Matt Milano had a nice season. I thought he played at least decent throughout the whole year. And I mean, he had his moments where he was fantastic. Uh, Tremaine Edmonds, though, man, you want to talk about hot and cold. Um, oof, there were times where you're like, this is it. You know, by next, the end of next season, they're going to consider him, you know, Bobby Wagner, fucking Fred Warner, and Tremaine Edmonds. And... Levante, Dave, like, the, you, you're going to be up there in the names of the, the big-name fucking linebackers. Ugh. But there were times where you're like, ooh, man, this guy needs work. 
he's really young. He is. He's like 22 maybe or 23. But in my opinion, I don't know. I think football age is different than like your actual age. Like, yeah, he might be 22 or 23, but his body has been put through the test. I don't know. I Can you put stock in that? I don't know. Because there are people that are drafted the same year as him that are like 25, 26. But anyway, um, Trinity Man Evans, I don't know how to feel about him. I love him personally. I think he is like the things you can do that he can do because of the way he's built, the way he can run and the way he can fucking just tower over and just be a force at six foot five. That in, in itself is incredibly valuable, but man, he was kind of sporadic this year. Uh, and AJ Klein, <laughs> never have I been so upset at somebody, but you know, simultane almost simultaneously been like, this guy is awesome. Cause man, he played like shit and then he fucking turned it like that Seattle game. He turned it up. He had an insane game. He was amazing in that game. Uh, and I mean, honestly, I thought AJ Klein, all things considered, he played well, man. Like, yeah, he was he was cold, but then he was hot. And I mean, I fuck with AJ Klein. I, I really do. Um, and I mean, the Bills defense, it was it was decent. All right, all things considered. Granted, it was great the year before and the year before that. Uh, it definitely took a step back. Shout out. Uh, but it was still decent. I mean, uh, ultimately, when you have a really good offense and a good defense, that's a recipe for success. That's a recipe for 11, 12, 13 wins. And ultimately, what do you know? They won 13 games. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, this season was coming into it. I figured, I thought the Bills were going to win the AFC East. Personally, I thought Tom Brady, you know, uh, the last year or two, maybe he wasn't that great, but he kind of had this, like, spectacle or this aura you know the bills had only beaten them like three times ever um and i think i don't know he had he had this luster to him that you know even though he might not be that great he might not be as good as some of the quarterbacks the bills have beaten it's just it's tom brady bill belichick i don't know the bills just couldn't beat him because literally last year they would have won the afc east had it not been for tom brady and the patriots i'm just saying because they went 10 and 6 should have won 11-5, but, you know, through the game against the Jets. I mean, if they would have won one of those games against the Patriots, I think they would have won the AFC East. Um, but, I mean, he was gone. The Jets were scrappy, but, I mean, not consistent enough, in my opinion, to pose a threat. And the Jets were terrible. So, I mean, you know, I, I figured the, Dol the Bills would win the AFC East, maybe win 10 games. 13 games? Are you kidding me with this schedule? I mean, like... Damn, you know, the Bills, they had to play the AFC West and the NFC West. People were talking about the NFC West having four playoff teams. And you already know having, you know, yeah, the Broncos are trash. The Chargers were kind of a mess. The Raiders were mediocre. But the Chiefs, I mean, that was a guaranteed loss, pretty much. I mean, the motherfuckers went 15-1. You know, I mean, they had a hard schedule. The Bills had a hard schedule, bro. Hard because they got to play the Steelers, who were 11-0 at one point. I mean... The Dolphins were scrappy. They had to play the Rams. They had to play the Seahawks. They had to play the Cardinals. 49ers. I mean, those are four formidable-ass teams. And the fact that they were able to go 3-1 and one against the NFC West, 3-1 and one against the um, AFC West, 6-0 uh, and oh against the fucking division. I mean, good God. What, what more could you have asked for? Absolutely. In my opinion, I mean, dude. They they were uh, they were amazing, <laughs> um, and I mean I want to end by talking about my favorite games, and also my least favorite games. Uh, so whenever it comes to mind, I definitely think of the Dolphins games as some of the better games. Uh, Josh Allen historically has played really well against the Dolphins, and he kept the historical trend up this year. Uh, he dropped like thirty something on them in week two, and then dropped like three or four touchdowns in the first half, and they just beat the brakes off the Dolphins. Um, week 17, it was just pathetic. Um, week two was one of the most entertaining games I've seen, even though there was a blackout. Um, Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs really showed out there. Um, another really awesome game, just a really fun game to watch, was um, the Rams game. The Bills jumped out to this insane lead, uh, and then they kind of blew it, and then ultimately Josh Allen, aided by a penalty, yes, Maybe a questionable call. Could have gone either way. Uh, 
but they end up throwing the walk-off touchdown. They blow a 25-point lead, but then ultimately it's all for naught, um, which is a crazy narrative, by the way. Like, nobody would have – everybody would have talked about it had they literally just – if they don't call that penalty, the game's over. But something I want to say, people who are hounding the Bills for getting lucky on that call, it's a give and take. The NFL is a give and take lead because, yeah, it wasn't a penalty, but you're going to tell me that – the Kyler Murray, Hail Murray situation. The Hail Murray, the Hail Murray. <laughs> You're going to tell me that that wasn't fluky? Like, if, yeah, the Rams penalty, you know, that could have ended the game. That is fluky. But so is the damn, the Hail Murray. Like, so, I mean, yeah, I'll say they don't call that penalty against, uh, I don't know who the fuck the quarterback was, and the Bills lose. Okay, uh, you know, Kyler Murray trips and falls whenever Mario Addison you know, tries to trip them up and they don't get the Hail Mary off. The Bills still go 13-3. and three. The Bills still go 3-1 and one against the NFC West. So it's like, it is what it is, right? Uh, and I mean, even that Cardinals game, I think that was one of the best games in the NFL all season long. You know, it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Each team scored at the end of the game to go ahead. I mean, it was, that was one of the better games all year. And I mean, yeah, the Bills lost, but it was still a really awesome game. Uh, and honestly, all the games at the end of the season, I mean, the Bills were really rolling at the end there. Um, cause I mean, they had a pretty convincing win. I think it was kind of garbage time late that made the game a little closer than it, you know, really should have been, um, against the 49ers. Um, then they beat the brakes off of the Patriots, beat the shit out of the Broncos. And then they finished off the top. I mean, that, that was impressive. Um, you know, I think another really awesome game was the Seahawks game. Um, cause it was a real big test and, you know, Josh Allen had one of his best games, uh, and you know, the Bills defense really stepped up and made Russell Wilson commit like four turnovers, pretty much killed his MVP, uh, chances. And honestly, I think it kind of derailed his offensive production for the, for the season, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Um, but that was a really, really fun game to watch. I mean, it was, it was just, it was just great. I think the best all around performance from the Bills though, if you're talking like they were, clicking on offense and clicking on defense. Part of me wants to say the Dolphins week 17 game. That's probably the legitimate correct answer, but I think you can kind of go with either that or the Patriots game because I mean, Josh Allen, yeah, he only played in a half against the Dolphins, but I mean, he showed out against him and I mean, he had a great game against the um, Patriots as well. I mean, honestly, just pick any of those final primetime games and the Dolphins game and I wouldn't be mad at it, honestly. Um, and then the worst games, uh, I would have to say, would be the three of their four losses. Um, you know, against the Titans, they got blown off the field. They were terrible. Um, it was fluky, clearly, because uh, they never played that bad, I don't think, ever again. Um, you know, the loss against the Chiefs was terrible. They only lost by nine points, but they gave up 250 yards rushing. Like, what? Uh, and then, you know, the second game against the Chiefs in the playoffs, it was same song, next verse, because instead of running the ball, they just got blown off the field through the air. So, and I mean, Josh Allen tried all he could in um, all three of those games, but, you know, it kind of reminded me of Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. They just, he couldn't really do anything because the team kind of let him down. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, ultimately, the way I see it, Josh Allen showed an insane amount of growth. He won two playoff games, and in my opinion, I think as a quarterback, to assert your dominance and to really make your mark and put your stamp on, uh, you know, your resume, I think playoff wins are a huge indicator of that. And, I mean, he beat uh, a really, like, an incredibly well-balanced Colts. I think the Colts and Titans were two of the most balanced teams in the NFL. They just so happen to come out of the same division. Um, you know, I, I thought the, that Colts game, that was one of the better games. That was a, a game the Colts really outplayed the Bills straight up. But Josh Allen played really well in that, in that playoff game. And I was like, damn, okay, Josh, I see you. The lights aren't too bright like they were against the Texans. Um, and, you know, that, that was definitely one of, one of the best games. That was one of the better games as well. Although I, I think the Bills were kind of lucky to win that game. Just saying, chip shot, 30-yard field goal missed. Freaking just missed my boy. Um, Michael Pittman, the end zone. I mean, pff, they really blew that game. The Colts 
absolutely blank. I have all the cool sound but boost. Um, but you know, he beat Lamar Jackson as well, a guy in his um, quarterback class. And so, I mean, I don't understand how you, you can't have some optimism for not only playoffs, but uh, I think Super Bowl is realistic. I, I thought people calling Super Bowl, like going into the playoffs, was a little unrealistic. I didn't think anybody was going to beat the Chiefs, and ultimately nobody in the AFC beat the Chiefs except for the Raiders almost twice somehow. Um, and, you know, going into next year, we don't know what the Chiefs are going to look like. I think the Bills are... I still pick the Chiefs to be the favorites, but they're, the Bills are right on their tail. Um, I think the Bills are probably the second best team in the NFL. I think the, I still think the Chiefs, the Bucks. Mm, I think they kind of caught lightning in a bottle, to be honest. I mean, they caught the Chiefs, I, I believe, on a bad night. And you don't know exactly how many pieces they're going to have on their roster because they got a lot of free agents. I think the Chiefs and the Bills are the two best teams in the NFL right now, just being honest. Uh, and I really hope Patrick Mahomes doesn't go down as like a Tom Brady kryptonite type beat. Um, just always beating the Bills because that would suck. Um, but nonetheless, I think the Bills are going to be fantastic next year. They showed that they could play really well and really step up the task when they had, in my opinion, one of the hardest schedules in the league. Um, and, you know, uh, next year, nothing's guaranteed. There's no, you know, uh, there's no for sure bet um, written in stone that the Bills will win the AFC East this year, next year, whatever. Um, you know, they could win the AFC East and then get bounced in the first round of the playoffs. Shit happens. I mean, like I said, they probably should have lost against the Colts and Phillip Rivers, but they didn't. And I mean, it is what it is. They ended up being the, the Ravens handily. So, I mean, they definitely deserve to be there in the AFC Championship game. But yeah, uh, really looking forward to the draft. Um, personally, I think the Bills should probably look at... I don't know if they need a running back, but it, it might not hurt. I think they just need a better running scheme, some better run blocking, honestly. I think the running backs they have are kind of fine. Um, but a tight end um, would be nice. A speed running back could be could be cool as well. Uh, and a pass rusher, uh, as well as a cornerback. I think those are your four biggest needs. Um, you know, free agency, if you want to go after a guy like Zach Ertz, that would be uh, amazing. Um, Shaq Barrett as a pass rusher, I mean, how could you – possibly you know think there's really no better option than, than both of those guys in my opinion for agency at those two positions um and i think richard sherman as a cornerback for agency signing i don't know maybe uh you know watch this back listen to it when i'm bored one day and uh you know zach Ertz, richard sherman both signed or you know they went elsewhere and they signed people completely different it seems like brandon bean and uh, sean mcdermott they usually go after like rotational guys and guys who are like more of like specialists at certain things so i don't think either of those guys are specialists i think they're just straight up really good players in my opinion but you never know maybe they'll i don't know we'll, we'll never know what, what's going to happen but and, and as well in the draft they do pick at 30 so maybe they'll trade up or maybe they'll find a, a draft steal but not too excited for the draft and um the off season but it's nice to know that i think the bills are going to be here to stay and i think we're going to start seeing some um consistency at the quarterback position which is something I've never seen with um, my Buffalo Bills so I'm excited I think next season they get to play the uh, NFC South and the AFC North I think uh, three years ago they played. yeah I think that's the case so looking forward to that um, did they play the AFC? Yeah, they play the AFC North. Uh, I, I I have full confidence that they'll win the AFC East again. Um, I, I just don't know how you could pick the Dolphins, the Jets, or the Patriots um, at this moment over them. But you never know. We'll see what happens. Um, excited for 2020, though, as always, or 2021, as always, due to, you know, a new year because of COVID. Hopefully, we can get to go to that um, Bills at Saints with my boy Zach. But you never know. Good vibes. And, um, yeah, looking forward to 2021 early, early predictions. The Bills go 12-4, and four, win the AFC East, and grab the second seed for a second year in a row.